Hi, I'm Bettina Sechelle, and I am a proud member of the Wine Sisterhood. We are in Laurel Glen Vineyard, which is on Sonoma Mountain. At the bottom of this hill is the closest town to us, which is Glen Ellen. Glen Ellen is this very cute little community completely surrounded by uh, parks and open space, which has kept it historically very small. It was also the home of Jack London. So Laurel Glen Vineyard was first planted to grapes in the 1880s by the German settlers to this part of Sonoma County. Today, all we grow here is Cabernet Sauvignon. The first Cabernet Sauvignon vines were planted in the 1960s, and this is the oldest block we are still farming, planted in the 1970s. Laurel Glen Vineyard has proven itself to be a great site for the variety of Cabernet Sauvignon, and that is because of where we're situated. Sonoma Mountain is the first significant windbreak to the Pacific, and on the west side of Sonoma Mountain, it is too cool for grape varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon. But once you crest Sonoma Mountain and come a little bit east, it becomes warm enough because the mountain protects us to grow Cabernet Sauvignon. We are above the fog line here at about 1,000 feet, and we're on a plateau that isn't shaded by the mountain in the afternoon. So we have perfect conditions to ripen Cabernet Sauvignon. And additionally, we harvest every year ripe Cabernet Sauvignon that has a little bit of acidity still in the grapes. And that is what makes Laurel Glen Vineyard so special. It has this kind of lightness, I like to say lightness on its feet, that you don't find in every Cabernet, and it's what gives the wines its, its, its distinctiveness. So what's so nice about the Cabernet we grow here is how small the berries are. You want Cabernet berries to be as small as possible because the color comes from the skin and a lot of the complexity of the wine comes from the skin. So the more skin to juice ratio, the better. Mmm, yummy! We're looking for seeds inside the grape, which are no longer green but have started to turn brown, comme ça. I'm Randall Watkins, the winemaker for Laurel Glen Vineyard. We have here the 2013 Cabernet Sauvignon from Sonoma Mountain that you saw earlier getting picked in the field. Now I'm getting ready to de-stem and put the, the grapes into the tank to prepare for fermentation. This first stage, we are doing a little bit of hand sorting of the clusters. If there's any overripe or underripe or leaves, I can uh, pick those out and make sure that the perfect clusters are going into my fermentation. The next stage, it goes up and into the uh, de-stimmer. We're not actually crushing these grapes. You could crush the grapes at this stage too, but we are removing the green stems. I don't want any bitter green uh, tannin in the wine, and so we ferment only the berries, juice, and seeds. And then the next stage here on our sorting is the berry sorting. The whole berries come out the basket. The holes of the basket in the stemmer crusher are too small for the stems, so the stems go out the end here. And then the berries fall down below, and we can go through a berry sorting in which the tiny ones that could be hard raisins or green berries fall through these little slats, and the beautiful, whole, perfectly ripe berries will roll along to the end into this stainless steel bin, which we can pick up with the forklift, and we don't even have to pump. We can tip this above our open-top stainless steel fermenters, gently dumping the grapes into the tank, and the next stage would be the fermentation. Um, some wineries will then add yeast. At Laurel Glen Vineyard, we actually do a native yeast fermentation. And during that process, the berries ride, rise to the top, the skins rise to the top, and the juice is in the middle. I want to mix the juice with the skins. Skins contain all the flavor, or, or all the color, and a lot of the great flavor. I want to extract by either punching down, which I'm going to demonstrate here, or pumping over the juice from the bottom of the tank up onto the skins and uh, mixing twice a day. We typically will do this for the process of the fermentation, which may last about two weeks, depending on how long the yeast take to ferment the sugar to dryness. No more residual sugar. And at that point, we can press off, uh, press 
the, the remaining wine off of the skins and the wine will go to barrel for aging. I typically age Cabernet Sauvignon for a year and a half to two years before bottling. Beautiful day here in Sonoma, as happens a lot. And I'm here at Laurel Glen Vineyard with my wonderful, very dear old friends from Heidelberg and our winemaker Randall Watkins. And we are going to be drinking a little bit of the Cabernet that comes from this vineyard. So there are two Cabernets that come from the vineyard. The best lots every year become Laurel Glen Vineyard Cabernet and the more kind of easy drinking, ready to go once it's bottled lots become Laurel Glen Counterpoint. I'm Bettina Sechelle for the Wine Sisterhood and I hope you've enjoyed seeing 2013 Harvest in action. Cheers! Cheers.